Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Juan and I am Just Juan Reader and today I am really excited because I am coming to you with an original book tag. This is going to be another musical Broadway-ish related book tag and it's going to be the Les Mis book tag or Les Miserables book tag. Um, I have taken 10 characters from the show, uh, some of the most beautiful music ever written for the stage, and then I have created some prompts to go along with those characters um, to talk about some books that I have really enjoyed recently. So here it is. Enjoy the Les Mis book tag. Okay, so character number one is, of course, Jean Valjean. I am reaching, but I fall. And the night is closing in As I stare into the void To the whirlpool of my sin I'll escape now from that world From the world of Jean Valjean Jean Valjean is nothing now Another story must begin Jean Valjean is the protagonist of Les Mis, and he is the character that goes through a really, really big journey, finding himself and finding morality. So the prompt for this book tag is name a book that deals with those topics, that deals with journeys in which characters have to go through a journey or find themselves or reflect uh, on something to find morality, to become better people, or at least to become more enlightened people. And so for this question, I chose Fortune Smiles by Adam Johnson. This is one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. Um, it is a collection of short stories, and every single story in here is amazing, superb, really evocative, really thought-provoking. And of course, it deals with morality and with journeys that people have to make in order to see themselves in a different way. It's amazing, and more people should read it. Character number two is Javert. Valjean, at last, we see each other plain. Monsieur le maire, you wear a different chain. And so for this question, you have to name a book that is Fierce and Relentless. And of course, I had to go with American Psycho by Bret Easton Ellis, because what other book could possibly be out there that is fiercer and more relentless than this one? This is a book that I found harsh and funny and just incredibly human at the same time, and being incredibly satirical. Um, it spoke a lot of truth. It was very... Uh, uh, cringe-worthy and unsettling, and it's a reading experience that I will never forget, and uh, it was just riveting. Character number three is Fantine. I dreamed a dream in time gone by When hope was high and life worth living I dreamed that love would never die I dreamed that God would be forgiving so Fantine is the character that I think is the most emotional of the show, at least the most sad. She's just sad and depressing and tragic and, you know, she dies and all of that. Um, so for Fantine, you have to name a book that is really emotional. Uh, the, 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 the effect that the book has is really, really um, hard-hitting emotionally. It really tugs at your heartstrings. <sighs> Yeah. No words, just... I can't even talk about this book without... Question number four is Marius. There's a grief that can't be spoken. There's a pain goes on and on. Empty chairs at empty tables. Where my friends are dead and gone. Here they talked of revolution. Here it was they lit the flame. Here they sang about tomorrow. And tomorrow never came. 
From the table in the corner, they could see a world reborn, and they rose with voices ringing, and I can hear them now, the very words that they had sung. communion on the lonely barricade at dawn. I kind of had some difficulties, some problems with uh, the prompt for Marius because Marius is a character that I have always had a lot of trouble defining. I think that he's a character who goes through so many different things and so many different issues in the show that, in the story, um, that I couldn't quite pinpoint what it is that defines him as a character for me. So, um, you know, he's, you know, invested with Cassette and trying to do the moral thing uh, with uh, the rest of the guys fighting and the, you know, the revolution thing. Um, he just goes through so many things. So for Marius, I'm just gonna go with a book that has a little bit of everything. Okay, I chose The Bone Clocks by David Mitchell for this question. This is a book that has so many different ingredients that if someone were to attempt to describe the plot or summarize the plot, or rather the plots within this book, it would make no sense at all to you. Um, it would sound like just a stupid, ridiculous, sort of nonsensical mix, but it totally works once you have read it. And it's a book that definitely grows on me um, the more I let it sink in. You should try reading this. Character number five is Eponine. On my own, pretending he's beside me. All alone, I walk with him till morning. Without him, I feel his arms around me. And when I lose my way, I close my eyes and he has found me. So for Eponine, it's really simple. Name a book that has a tragic love story. Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin is a modern classic. It is a masterpiece and it's one of my new favorite books of this year and probably of all time. It is a tragic love story among many other things. It is one of those books that when I think about it, I just think this is literary heaven. This is perfection. Character number six is Cosette. In my life, there are so many questions and answers that somehow seem wrong. In my life, there are times when I catch in the silence the sigh of a faraway song. And it sings of a world that I long to see out of reach. Just a whisper away waiting for me. In my life, I have all that I want to, I loving and gentle and good. But Papa, dear Papa, in your eyes I am just like a child who is lost in a ward. Just as with Marius, I had some trouble defining what, you know, what is Cassette? What does Cassette represent for me? Um, and I think that more than anything else, Cassette for me represents this situation of being trapped. She's trapped uh, in every possible way. Um, and uh, so for this, for this character, I've chosen uh, this prompt. Name a book that has characters, a character or a set of characters who are trapped uh, or who are in a very dire circumstance or in a difficult situation. Idaho is the stunning, remarkable debut novel of Emily Ruskovich. Um, one of the many themes that it addresses is this idea, this fear of losing your capacities, losing your mind, and losing yourself, losing your humanity. So uh, it puts all the characters in the novel in really dire circumstances, and it's such a stunning work that you cannot miss. Character number seven is actually a combo. It's Madame and Monsieur Thénardier. 
Watch them run amok, catch them as they fall, never know your luck when there's a free fall roll. So the Tenardiers are the characters who provide some comic relief in Les Mis. So that's the, the prompt. Name a book that has some comic relief or a very strong comic vein. I chose Vile Bodies by Evelyn Waugh. This is a book that I read this year and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, on the one hand, the themes are really important and like really serious, but the execution of the book, the way that it's told, is just hysterically funny. It's hilarious. It, it kind of has this British, charming, Downton Abbey-esque way uh, of, of telling the story. And it's just, it's, it's a wild ride. Character number eight is Angel Raz. Do you hear the people sing, singing the song of angry men? It is the music of a people who will not be slaves again. When the beating of your heart echoes the beating of the drums, there is a life about to start when tomorrow comes. So Angel Raz is a character that I really like. Uh, he's kind of that strong hero figure, but he sometimes gets forgotten and people don't give him a lot of credit. Um, but I think he's really strong. And so I think that for this prompt, it's name a book that really deals with masculinity. The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde by Juno Diaz is such a splendid novel. I thought it was superb. It addresses a lot of issues it explores a bunch of themes, and I think masculinity is one of the most prominent ones. Um, I love this book, even though it is a tragedy at the end of the day. At the end of the day, you get nothing for nothing, but a bum bum, but a bum, hey, Les Mis. Character number nine is The Priest. And remember the truth that once was spoken. To love another person is to see the face of God. So, you know, the priest is this kind of uplifting uh, opportunity figure. You know, he gives Jean Valjean what he needs in order to change himself and go through this journey of finding morality. So um, the prompt for this uh, uh, character is name a book that is uplifting. So I chose 10th of December by George Saunders. This is my favorite short story collection that I've read so far ever. Um, it is experimental, beautifully written, wildly imaginative and inventive in every way. Um, it is very real while at the same time being really wacky and he just does it masterfully like no one else that I know of. Um, and what I really like is that at the end of the day, again, at the end of the day, um, he is a very human guy. He's like really uplifting. The stories are dark and sometimes really creepy and violent and they speak of very upsetting truths uh, about humans, but they are always uplifting and hopeful, kind of. And finally, character number 10 is Gavroche. That inspector thinks he's something, but it's me who runs this town, and my theatre never closes, and the curtains never down. Trust Gavroche, have no fear, you will always find me here. And so for this, you have to name a book that is small, it's short, but it was unexpectedly good. It took you by surprise. And because we're talking about something really short, I chose a short story, actually, not a book, but a short story. Um, and it is a short story that is featured in this wonderful anthology, which is the best American short stories of 2014, edited by Jennifer Egan. And the short story in question is by Lauren Groff, and it is titled At the Round Earth's Imagined Corners. It is such a gem, such a wonderful example of what I value and what I am looking for in a short story. That's it, guys. That was the Lay Miss book tag. I hope you enjoyed. I certainly did. It was a lot of fun being all silly and ridiculous with you guys. I always have such a blast. Um, please go ahead and do the tag. You don't have to sing or anything. Just use the prompts and the characters and all that. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you next time.